Hello, and welcome to part three in our video series on unpacking the 2014 Elementary South Carolina Science Standards, or how to figure out what you want your students to do in order to learn what you want them to know. In part three, we're going to look at the performance indicators and specifically the part of the performance indicators that define the essential content knowledge. Now, if you recall in part one, we looked at the conceptual understandings. Those were the big ideas, the uh, overarching understandings that the students should show evidence of by the time they're finished with a unit. And in part two, we looked at the science and engineering practices part of the performance indicators, which defined the, the ways the students would learn science through doing the things that scientists and engineers do through guided scientific inquiry. Now, in part three, we're going to look at the, uh, the content knowledge that they develop a knowledge of through those science and engineering practices. So let's begin. So if we look at this, we'll take a look just as a reminder at those codes again in yellow. So these are indicators for the third grade, that's that three, the life science L, the fifth standard and A for the first conceptual understanding. And these are indicators one and two respectively. Now, in the last video, we looked at that part in blue, the science and engineering practices. Uh, these examples are analyze and interpret data and develop and use models. Now, in this, we're looking at the essential content knowledge defined in green here. This is the actual science, the science facts, the science details that the students are expected to learn about through doing those science and engineering practices. So, for example, in the first indicator there, where it says analyze and interpret data about the characteristics of the environments to describe how the environment supports a variety of organisms. So if we look just at that grain, what students are going to be engaging in with science content is describing how environments support the variety of organisms in there. So how is it that a saltwater environment supports sharks and, and, and whales and different types of fish? How is it that a desert or a grassland supports the things that live there? Now, the way they're going to develop a knowledge of how the things in that environment, how the environment are able to support the things that live there is by analyzing and interpreting data about the characteristics of those environments. So this helps you as a teacher know that students need to have data related to the characteristics of the environment. And, that, and the characteristics, the specifics are all defined in the essential content knowledge support documents that we have access to. But they're going to look at that, those characteristics and look at how the students are going to use data about those characteristics to describe how those different environments support the variety of organisms that live there. And that data can come from research, that data can come from watching video clips, that data can come from taking them outside and using using the environment right outside your classroom as, as sort of an example of the things that they're going to look at. But what they're looking at are characteristics of environments and using those char char characteristics to say, because of these characteristics, this environment can support these types of organisms. Now, if we look at the second example, this is a little bit different. So this one is about food chains and using food chains to classify organisms as producers, things that make their own food, consumers, things that eat other things, and decomposers, things that break things down that have died. And they're going to use that information and they're going to describe how organisms obtain energy from different sources as exemplified by a food chain. Now, what makes this different from just saying students are going to learn about food chains is going back to that SEP. This is about developing and using models of a food chain to classify and describe how organisms obtain energy. So this says that students have to acquire information from somewhere to develop their own food chain models. And what those food chain models do is what it says there in green, to classify organisms as producers, consumers, and decomposers, and then use that food chain model to describe how the organisms obtain energy. So that pretty much says this is what's got to be in the model that the students are going to develop. In both cases, this is not about students memorizing science content, but about students going through a science and engineering practice, analyze and interpret data or develop and use models in order to construct the knowledge defined by that essential knowledge piece in Crane. So if you look at this in the big picture, putting all the pieces together, the conceptual understandings were all about the big ideas. What do students need to know about organisms in their habitats, in their environments, and how changes in the environments affect them? Then we looked at the SCPs. What are the students actually going to do 
in order to construct knowledge of the essential content knowledge that we've talked about here in this video series. Put together, this is what a teacher needs in order to plan a lesson out so that it meets that target, in order to assess what students are doing and what they've come to understand. It's important with that assessment in particular that teachers are not just looking at the content knowledge, but they're looking at the how they developed an understanding of that content knowledge through the use of those and the implementation of those science and engineering practices. Well, I hope these videos have helped you understand a little bit more of how to unpack the South Carolina elementary science standards and how to use the information from those standards to design a learning experience, to plan out the lessons, to engage the students, and to assess their understanding of both their ability to engage in a practice and the science concepts as defined by the essential knowledge that are learned through those practices. Thank you very much.